We just sang, rest here in his goodness. I wonder this morning, are you resting in the goodness of Jesus Christ? Can I tell you what it will affect in you if you rest in the goodness of Jesus Christ? It will prevent you from ever trying to work to please him again. Did you catch what I said? If you rest in the goodness of Jesus, it will change your mindset about your motives from that point forward. And you'll never again enter into anything that you do thinking, I'm going to do this to please the Father. Because listen, you can't please him. He's only pleased by Christ in you. And if you'll rest in Christ's goodness, then our motive will never be one of trying to be what we cannot be. I'm preaching a whole different sermon right now. And it hadn't cost you one extra cent. Rest in His goodness. Stop trying to be good. Just rest in His goodness. And you will be good. Amen? Now, are you over in Romans chapter 8 after all that filibustering I did? We're going to look at verses 5 through 9 this morning. Before I begin, I'll ask the question, how many voices do you think you can recognize? Human voices? Three? Three? Jack, the one you hear the most, you stop it. (laughs) It's amazing, though, how how much the mind can recall just the sound of a voice. Now, caller ID has kind of robbed us of this ability. You kids, and when I say kids, if you're probably under 35, you don't remember when there was no caller ID. If you didn't get to the phone in time and they hung up, You had to wonder for the rest of your life, what call did I just miss? Right? Now we look and go, oh, that's John, not not answering, right? (laughs) Never would I do that to you, brother. But it amazes me how many voices either on the the radio and a song comes on immediately, you go, oh, that's so-and-so, or uh, an actor's voice that you've heard many times, or friends from... 20 years ago, the minute you hear their voice, that's so-and-so. Our mind has that ability in it. But I want to talk to you about another voice this morning. And that's the voice of God. Do you recognize when the Lord is speaking to you? Now, you looking at me, some of you already cross-eyed going, I've never heard a voice. Listen to me carefully. If you've never heard the voice of God, you are not his child. Now, I'm going to try to help you discern what that means in just a minute. But when you listen for a voice, if you're waiting for one that's theatrical and, and, you know, Hollywoodish and... Hello. Look, if you're listening for that, right, you're never going to hear it. But the voice of God, listen to me, speaks to his children. I don't, I can't understand it with my mind, but the Spirit of God in us speaks to us. And if we're going to be walking as children of light, we have to understand that voice. We have to know that voice immediately. John 10.4 says what? My sheep follow me. For they know my voice. Many of us are sheep, but we walk around like goats all day because we're listening to the wrong voice. Now, I want to tell you something. We have an adversary, right? We have an adversary, and he wants you to trip and stumble all, you know, all day long. That's, that's what he wants. But I want to tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. The devil himself has never spoken to any one of you. Because he can only be in one place at one time, and he's not concerned with you today. Now, he has demons, okay? But let me tell you why the devil doesn't have to spend so much time talking to you, because your flesh does it for him. 
Your flesh is still programmed in that old system that you were born into, and so the flesh does all the damage that needs to be done. Satan doesn't have to woo you or, or speak to you anymore. All he has to do is go, just follow yourself. So that's where I want to talk about this morning, the spirit or self. Which are we following? Verses 5 through 9 in chapter 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not. He is. Father, this morning I pray, Lord, that we hear from you. Lord, what I'm about to say is only information if it's not the Spirit that gives us confirmation and illumination. Father, may your word become revelation to us today. Might we see where it is we have missed you. Lord, might we be following the Spirit and not self. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now I want to speak to you today. There are a lot of theologians who disagree about this idea of carnality. Can a Christian be carnal? I'm not going to get into that today. But what I want to attack this from the standpoint of this, I want to talk to the believer today. Okay? We're at church. I want to talk to the believer today. So everything I'm going to say to you is going to come from the standpoint that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I believe in that relationship with Jesus Christ, you can absolutely produce carnality. I believe that you can behave carnally. You know why I believe it? Because I have done it. And if you'll say this morning you've never done it, I'll challenge you to that. So let's look at this this morning and talk about the spirit or self. And I'm not going to spend much time on being led by the self or the flesh because we are so, uh, uh, we're so acquainted with it. But I believe if you understand what it looks like to be led by the self, it'll make us aware of, of what we need to stop doing. I want to talk to you about two things about self. First, the pinnacle of self. What does self want when self leads? Self, listen, wants to see our own will be accomplished. How do I know if I'm being led by myself? Because my will is, pre is, is, is preeminent in my plans. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want my way. If self is leading and the flesh is leading, how do I know? Because I want what I want and I'm not going to take no for an answer. That's the flesh. That's the very definition of yourself. You are self-centered. I'm self-centered. And everything we do revolves around that centrality of self. And so if self is in the lead, then here's what you can know without even questioning anything. Am I trying to accomplish my will or God's? So if I'm following self this morning, if I'm following the flesh, the first thing I need to understand is that I'm wanting to see my will accomplished. I'm going to show you, uh, tell you three things real quickly about being led by self. Number one, we strive for self-satisfaction. Following the flesh means, first of all, that I want to satisfy my desires. That's where sin is comes in right isn't that what the scripture tells us when we're led astray by our own desires listen when flesh is in the lead we strive for self-satisfaction but secondly we strive for self-preservation now I'm gonna I'm gonna help you here with something who are you preserved by 
You can say it out loud. Anytime we strive and strain to keep ourselves, it's flesh. Doesn't mean we're not to keep ourselves under subjection like Paul says. Doesn't mean we're not to, by the Spirit of God, rule over ourselves, to beat ourselves into submission. But I'm talking about self-preservation. Anytime you, you fear, anytime you worry, anytime you think that your actions is going to make you more secure than you already are in Christ, it is a fleshly thing you're involved in. Listen, if you're watching the stork market, stork market, boy, that's a different one. These days, that's about what it is, right? If you watch the stock market ring in your hands, if you're doing this to leverage your money because how am I going to make it? I'm going to tell you how. God doesn't mean he's not wanting you to be a good steward and to, do, to follow his will. But if it's about your self-preservation and your thought process is, if I don't do this, my world is going to collapse, you are not trusting God. You're following the flesh. Flesh is all about self-satisfaction. I want what I want. Self is all about self-preservation. But thirdly, self is all about self-promotion. Listen, let's talk about motive for a minute. And we're going to talk about this more later. If my motive is to be seen or to be praised, I'm following self. Anything you do, listen, included in church service, in the Sunday school class, in the deacons meeting, I don't care where you are, if you do something to be seen, it is self. I want my name in the bulletin. Well, congratulations. So the pinnacle of self, guess what, is self. Now the problem with self, we find in three consecutive verses here, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, look at it. That's why I told you I'm going to talk to you about, about the believer, right? Verse 6 says it leads to death. To be carnally minded leads to death. Now, I don't mean physical death, that we leave a a strewn path of dead people behind us. But listen, you have two options in this life. To follow Christ, which leads to life and peace, or to follow self, and it leads to dead spiritual waste. Does that sound attractive to anybody? My behavior leads to death. The second problem is it makes us the enemy of God. Well, Preacher, we were reconciled to God through Christ. Absolutely. But I want to tell you, your behavior can be enmity to God. He says friendship with the world, right, is enmity with God. Why would we want to go back to where he brought us out of? But that's the only place flesh knows. It's the only place flesh knows. Where did Peter go when he thought Jesus was dead? Back to fishing because it's what the flesh knew. Well, boys, let's go fish. It's all over with. Can I tell you, your flesh is so you, it, it automatically just, and I'm talking instantly, reverts right back to you. Doesn't have to be retrained. You can spend two years in the most intense theological training you've ever had every day, every hour being poured over in the Scripture. And listen, one second you can be all the way back to where you used to be in the flesh. Believe me, prayed up, read up in the morning time, walking outside, woo, feeling good spiritually and get to the first red light. (laughs) Nobody had to untrain me. It's in you. And it's death. And it's the enmity of God. Now, why is it that? Because, listen, when we are behaving in the flesh, we are doing just the opposite of bringing people to Christ. We're driving them away. Thirdly, verse 8, and here's the, here's the overarching thing is we cannot please God when we're following the flesh. 
Notice he didn't say you can't behave like a Christian. Hello? I can preach, teach, sing, do whatever I can do. All the, Listen, everything that you see somebody do in church, it can be done in the flesh. Every bit of it. But it never pleases God. Isn't that sad? You put on a tie for nothing. Spirit of flesh, when we're led by the flesh, nothing good comes of it. But I want to spend the rest of our time talking about being led by the Spirit. I told you the pinnacle of self is to see our own will accomplished. The purpose of the Spirit is to see the will of God accomplished. Period. Let me tell you what I have a problem with. Listen, I have a problem with, with denominations that over-elevate the person of the Spirit of God because Jesus said the Spirit will come and teach you all things pertaining to me. The Spirit of God is to point people to Jesus so that in turn he can make, bring them into reconciliation with the Father. So when we follow the will of God, we follow the Spirit of God, rather, it will be to have the will of God accomplished in our lives. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time this morning showing you or teaching you how to identify if I'm wondering if this is this me or the Spirit of God, there's going to be some ways you can tell. Okay, let's go through some of those. First, the perfection of the Spirit. He is always perfectly aligned with the Word of God. When the Spirit leads you, He will never deviate from the Word of God. Period. How do I know if the Spirit's leading me? The first litmus test is get my Scripture out and read it. And if it aligns perfectly with the Word of God, then I can move, move ahead. Now the problem with many today is we don't know the Word of God. Well, the preacher said the Spirit's going to align with the Word, but I don't know what the Word says about this. So then I'll lean on my own understanding. Oops. Galatians 5, I mean, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 2, 13. <clears throat> These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches us, but what which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The first test for us this morning is, is this the, the will of God, the Spirit of God? Is it matched perfectly with the Word of God? That's our first test. Secondly, the peculiarity of the Spirit. Let me tell you how you know it's the Spirit of God. He will always be opposite of your old nature. Hello? If it's a 180 from your normal, it's probably the Spirit of God. It's not that you've grown. I've grown so much spiritually. Preach, I used to would have done this, but now I do that. It's not because you've grown. It's because you finally learned whose voice to listen to. Now, there's growth involved. But you're, look, listen, you are never, ever, ever going to be such a Christian that you don't need the Spirit of God. You're never going to grow so much spiritually that, you, Spirit, you take the day off, I got this. So the way I know, one of the ways I know it's the Spirit of God is, is it completely opposite of me? The idea is that he is contrary to us. Galatians 5, 17, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. I'm glad the spirit is contrary with me. I don't want him to ever to agree with me. But you know what we do? We strain at the Bible, and we try to make a verse match what we believe so that we can walk in some sort of freedom. That's not freedom at all. I told you we can mimic the behavior of a believer. 
But I want to tell you, you can't mimic the motive. It's going to be contrary to your old self. The spirit is peculiar because he is not like you. So we can tell from the perfection of the spirit. We can tell from the peculiarity of the spirit. We can also tell from the, produ- the promptings of the spirit. I'm going to surprise you here. And tell you that the Spirit of God often focuses on little things. Y'all realize how often we ignore the small things of life and only pray about the big things? You, You won't believe how many people I know that hardly ever darken the door of the church. They don't need church. They don't even need a pastor. But the minute they have a crisis in the home... Well, lo and behold, they need some super spiritual gap standard to come in on their behalf. Listen, the Spirit is needed in the little things of life. The Spirit is needed in the little things of life. And that's often where He begins in your life. Listen to me, children. Why do you think he gave you this admonition, this this commandment? Children, obey your parents. Start with the small things. You don't teach your children how to write an essay the first day of school. You teach them how to recognize an A and then a B and then a C. And we build on those things and spiritually... Christ does the same thing by His Spirit in us. He teaches us how to listen to Him in the small things. In the small things. In the small things. Then He goes, I think you're ready for a little bit larger thing. He says, who is faithful in the little things will be given much. Now, I want to ask you this question. When's the last time God's given you a big assignment? Well, never. Well, maybe it's because we haven't done so well on the small ones. We ignore him on the day-to-day things. Went to a high school football game the other day. I want to tell you one place we're ignoring God is how we ought to dress. That is... Don't let your daughter go out of the house like I watched the other night. The small things. The Spirit often focuses on the small things. Are you listening? Are you listening? Luke 16, 10, I said it a moment ago, He is faithful in what is least, is faithful also and much. Second prompting, not only does he focus on little things, he warns of approaching danger. Physically and spiritually. But I want to focus on the spiritual for a moment. You realize how many of us right now are in a place that the Spirit tried to keep us out of? Hello? How many millions of Americans right now are drowning in debt that they never prayed about the first time about the Lord to have them make a purchase or not? We want Him to rescue us once we're in debt. But we didn't want to listen to Him when He said, Don't do it. We didn't want to listen to him when he said, don't get in this relationship. Don't take that job. Because listen, corporate America could care less about your ability to worship or be in God's house. They will work you seven days a week if you let them. They don't care if you get to spend time with your kids. Let your teachers raise them.
1 Corinthians 10, 12, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. The Spirit of God will point. Watch that. Watch that. One of the funniest things I've ever heard, I might have told somebody about this recently, I think maybe Quincy. My former pastor was a very serious man and we were at the graveside doing a graveside service together. And he tells me this joke at standing, at waiting on the... I couldn't quit laughing. It was the most unreal thing I've ever heard. But he tells me the story of a man whose wife had died and, and the pallbearers are bringing her out and they're walking towards the grave and they trip over a rock. And the casket hits the ground so hard that his wife came back to life. Now his wife was a real nag. So for two more years this man endured suffering and nagging every single day. Till two years later his wife died again. Get back to the graveside. The husband gets out of the hearse and he walks ahead and goes, What's that rock? What's that rock? Herb tells me that while we're standing there waiting. I'm going. Every time I get out now at the cemetery, I, I watch that rock. It's, it goes to my head immediately. Can I tell you something? Some of you have endured years of things that you shouldn't have because you wouldn't listen to the Spirit saying, watch that rock. Do you think he wants you to be where you are? Listen, he allows us to go through seasons and sometimes intentionally to test us and to try us and to prove us. But how often do we get ourselves in a mess because we simply didn't listen or we didn't recognize the voice? He warns us of approaching danger. I want to talk about the production of the Spirit. Another litmus test that we can give ourselves to know is this the Spirit of God or is this self? Ask this question, if I do this, will it make me more like Christ? Is this behavior like Christ? When we follow the Spirit of God, He produces the character of God in us when we obey. Notice I said he produces the character of God in you. You'll never produce it in yourself. Now you can reproduce it and make a cheap knockoff, but the Spirit produces the character of God in us when we obey. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Law. Listen, when we obey the Spirit of God, every single one of that fruit is in your life. It's, it is something you cannot replicate. Period. It is the fruit of the Spirit. So, can we know if the Spirit of God is leading us when we realize that He is producing fruit in us? then yes, we can. Now I want to talk about the problem with us in the Spirit. Here's the problem for most believers. His voice is weakened when we wait. His voice is weakened when we wait. Spirit tells you to do something. You hesitate. He may remind you again, but the voice is a little fainter than it was the first time. And the longer we delay, the longer we delay. Listen, here's where I see this the most prevalent is when God reveals to you your need of a Savior. And it was loud and clear. And you held on to the pew and said, I'm not going today. 
I don't want to go down there and have to stand in front of people. I don't want to have to do this or go and do that. Months later, maybe a year later, you need to be saved. I don't want to go down. I don't want to do. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. And the next time, you need to be saved. I want to tell you, you're going to keep waiting until the voice can't be heard at all. His voice is weakened when we wait. It's the same for the believer when he tells us, go next door and witness to your neighbor. Well, it's not a good time. They're probably in the middle of supper. Go! God says, go, go! There's no better time. Secondly, our second problem is our hearing is deadened by disobedience. See, one of those is on his end, one's on our end. Scripture talks about the problem with spiritual ears in the Bible. I want to tell you as a believer, when you have sin in your life, the first form of communication the Spirit brings to you is conviction. And if we won't respond to conviction, then He's likely not to give us any other instruction until we come back to the place of conviction. And we deal with that. I mean, I, I talked a minute ago about having a phone that didn't have caller ID. And it actually had a cable that was attached to the wall. Now, if your family, if you had a good daddy, he'd bring you one of those 30-footers home that you could go in about three bedrooms away and close nine doors on you. What's up? Right? I'm going to take you back. Take you back even maybe about the, about the same distance. There used to be these TVs that were not smart TVs. And this was pre, hold on, cable. And you would have to walk across the room. Yes, walk had this dial sticking out of the front. Dook, 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 dook. Turn the channel. When you had one of those TVs, right, because huh, cable wasn't flooding in through your brains and through the wireless world, you had to run an antenna outside. But on your TV, John, you were old enough to remember this, on your TV was this thing called rabbit ears. Can I get an amen for rabbit ears? You picked up probably a third channel if your rabbit ears were set right. If your rabbit ears weren't right, you go get the tin foil, hallelujah, tin foil. Some of y'all are going to say, Mama, what was he talking about? And drape it over there systematically forming two domes on either side that would pick up JB, or what, W, what it, what it was in the local channel, right? And you could watch it till midnight till the snow came on. <laughs> what, right? They would play what? The Star Spangled Banner or the National Anthem? It was time for bed. What no heathens up after midnight listening to TV? Now, why in the world am I talking about rabbit ears? Look, because if your rabbit ears wasn't right, you wasn't watching nothing. I don't went all around the block, hadn't I? Look, go back to where the Spirit deals with us with conviction. If we're not hearing the Spirit of God, we need to repent. Hello? We need to repent so that our rabbit ears are positioned in the right place and we begin to hear the signal and the clarity of the voice of God again because listen he's not gurgling his voice he's not hiding who he is he's speaking to you clearly and if you can't hear it it's not a God problem it's repentance problem and so whatever you got to do to get right with God do it 
I've had the pleasure of going to Ricky's place in Kentucky, and I'll never forget a few years ago, I think Bud was with me. Ricky's on the roof. I'm hanging out the window, and Bud's the middleman, and we're trying to adjust the, the antenna. I think you're going to get one channel in Kentucky. They kind of pour up there. And the three of us are turning this. Yeah, I can see, I can see some squiggly lines. I think we almost got it. The three of us said we'll do whatever we can to not be bored tonight and be able to watch Hee Haw. I think that was the highlight, right? Are you willing, listen to me, to do whatever is necessary to restore your reception of the voice of God? Are you willing to do what's necessary? We'll do silly things to be able to watch Hee Haw. But we'll go months without hearing the voice of God and think this is completely normal. It is not normal for a child of God not to hear their father's voice. 1 Thessalonians, I believe this is talking about not doing what the Spirit has told us. Do not quench the Spirit. Ephesians 4.30, I believe this is dealing with, not, with doing what we're told not to do. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So in our lives today, is the Spirit quenched or is the Spirit grieved? If He is, we need to repent that He would not be that way with us. That we can hear His voice. Are you hearing Him today? Are you hearing Him these days? I want to talk about linked to the Spirit. We've looked at some things. If we're being led by the self and by, led by the Spirit, the difference in those two things. But I want to bring you to verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, listen. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. If we are a believer, the Spirit of God lives in us. If He does not, then you are not. If the Spirit of God does not live in you, then you are not a believer. Which brings us to the perfection of the Spirit. The Spirit can only be understood by the Spirit. The Spirit can only be understood by the Spirit. If you're sitting here this morning as I've preached about listening to the voice of God and you can say in your heart, and some of you are this morning, I don't know that I've ever heard the voice of God in my life. Maybe it's because you don't have the Spirit of God living in you. Maybe, just maybe, you've been going through the motions of going to church and acting a certain way, but you've never been born into the body of Christ by the Spirit of God. And so you're watching others and you mimic what they do and you read a verse and you make up your own version of it and you're trying to live something that you cannot live. First Corinthians 2 14 but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolish to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned you see you have a problem this morning if you're not a child of God but you're wanting to be led by God he will not lead you until you're his you must be a child of of God to know his voice they weren't sheep because they knew his voice they knew his voice because they were sheep I want to ask you a pointed question that only you can answer this morning have you heard the voice of God not the one that sounds like the Ten Commandments voice, but a still, small voice in your inner man that says to you, listen to me, I am God. Because I want to tell you this morning, only lives led by the Spirit 
lead others to spiritual lives. Only those led by the Spirit lead others to spiritual lives. So, I want to give you an opportunity this morning not to miss, not to miss the voice of God. He may be calling you to repentance today, to some obedience to a particular matter in your life. Maybe, just maybe today, you've heard His voice one more time that says, You need Christ. Will you Will you respond? Don't miss another opportunity. Don't miss another opportunity to hear God and respond. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your love for us, Lord. Thank you for the Spirit of God who dwells in us. Lord, that we might be followers of you. Father, without the Spirit, it would be impossible to follow you. And so, Lord, I'm grateful today for your spirit. Lord, thank you that you love us enough to give us your son. But, Father, when he returned, you gave us your spirit. And, Lord, without him, we are truly lost. So, Father, today we pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in us. Lord, that our hearts would turn towards you, that our, that our spiritual ears would be tuned in to your voice, that we might hear you and know you and to walk accordingly. Father, have your way with this time now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you need to come this morning, you come.